From NBC News, this is Today with Hoda Kotb and Jenna Bush Hager. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza. Okay, well, she wanted a better education for her kids. Not going to believe where she found it. The lesson she learned that you can share with your kids. That's next. It's back to school season, and like every parent, Taru Clavel wanted to provide her kids with the best education possible over the span of 10 years. Her family moved to Hong Kong, to Shanghai, then Tokyo. Where she enrolled her three young children in the local public school system. Her kids love learning. They spoke three languages, and when they returned to the United States, they tested two years ahead of their wow. grade level in math. Amazing. Now, Taru runs an education consulting practice, and she wants to share the lessons she learned with other parents in her new book, World Class: One Mother's Journey Halfway Around the Globe in Search of the Best Education for Her Children. Taru, good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. This is such an interesting case study yeah. because we American parents, we hear about books like Tiger Mom, and yes. we say, should we be doing it that way? So, just from your firsthand experience, what is the difference in education in places like Hong Kong and Tokyo versus here in the United States? I would say the biggest difference was when we were in Shanghai and when we were in Japan, the government mandates the textbooks and what needs to be taught in the classroom. So the teachers literally have to teach those books from cover to cover.、Mm -hmm. And when we returned to the U.S. in 2016, I noticed that the teachers have a lot more autonomy in terms of not only the content that's being taught, but even the materials they use. And there's a lot more technology in the classrooms here than we ever had、there's、overseas. There's more here. Oh, that's interesting. Oh yes. Yeah. No, there it was. I think you write about it. it was very sort of bare bones, right? No, no technology. You know, books that were you know just textbooks. But、Absolutely. in that way, how were the kids then? Instructed to learn, was, was it mostly by rote? They're memorizing things. Well,、yeah. that's a really. We actually make a joke in my family that the only technology in the classrooms there was a light switch on the wall. Wow. And so the only tools they really had were pencil, paper, and the textbook. So there was a lot of learning, just really like a manual, right? What, what was in front of you? And they do use a lot of manipulatives there as well. It was just a very tech-free environment. So you've got some tips for us, which、yeah. will be helpful. Keep a can-do mindset is sort of the overall theme, but you also say set high expectations, which is good advice for any parent. So it was interesting when we came back in 2016 as well. My daughter, who was in second grade at the time, she came home and said, "You know, Mama, I'm not good at math," and that was never part of our dialogue when we were overseas because、mm -hmm. there is no. I'm not good at math. There's no parent saying to their child, really, you know, I'm not good at math, so maybe you're not, or we're not a really a reader family.、Mm. Everybody can do it, and it's a belief that every child can meet those higher learning expectations.、Um, and an interesting story too that I talk about in World Class is when we first arrived in Shanghai in 2010. My son was in first grade at a local public school there, and he was kept after school until he hit a 95% on his math quiz, and that was just par for the course, and it really sets a high bar. I wonder what the culture shock was like for them coming back to the U.S. school system here, from coming from Shanghai and Tokyo. Well, talk about technology! Suddenly, there was so much technology in the classroom,、yeah. and there was so much more freedom to learn what they wanted to. And it wasn't so clear necessarily what they had to do to navigate navigate the curriculum. So, if you had one lesson for American parents out there, because you have the rare experience of seeing both worlds, most of us just have the American system.、Yeah. What would you say? How should you best incorporate both of what you've seen?、Um, I would say it's amazing if you raise those learning expectations for your children and. You pretty much demand a rigor in your household,、mm -hmm. um, whether it be academically or extracurricularly. They can meet those,、mm -hmm. and struggle is a fundamental part of learning.、Mm -hmm. And when you overcome those challenges, what you get to in the other side of that is motivation, and that is the underpinning of lifelong learning, really. And I'm guessing your kids aren't playing video games like mine. <laughs> like、um, incessantly, <laughs> it's, a, it's a distraction, it's a and it's definitely a lure.、Um, yeah. And and I, I would be. I wouldn't be honest if I weren't saying that it it, it is a it is prob a problem in this country. I feel、yeah. like that technology is in our children's lives on a on a on a regular basis,、um, but we do try to minimize it. Well, how do you、yeah. do that? You keep all the phones in one place and the iPads. I actually what、well, we do,、um, and my kids actually don't have smartphones. I have a 15, a 13, and a 10, and that's a pretty、you. strict rule. Gosh,、wow. And we actually limit technology to an hour. That includes schoolwork a day. That's、now. what I gotta do. Go. <laughs> yeah, that's what we all have to be doing. Yeah. Taru, thank you. Some great pointers, by the way. And you、oh, can check out Taru's you. book World Class at today.com/shop. And we're back right after this. Yeah, Mike. Mike.